Hello everybody, welcome back to Planet X News. This is Scott from the Nibiru channel. It is July 5th, 2017. And ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to speak to you a little bit about Yellowstone. I know Yellowstone has been in the news and on a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of reports out there pertaining to Yellowstone and all of the activity, all of the seismic activity throughout the month of June. And yes, it is very alarming. Yellowstone is probably the most dangerous place on this planet. Now, going into the month of June, this seismic activity started. This report here is from the Watchers website. Once again, an absolutely fantastic website to get a lot of information pertaining to what is happening around the world. And the headline here reads, Yellowstone Volcano Elevated Earthquake Activity During the Month of June 2017. And this was just published on July 2nd. And going into the information, it states that Yellowstone earthquake activity is currently at an elevated level compared with typical background activity. And this is largely due to energetic earthquake swarms that were about six miles north of West Yellowstone, Montana. And this all started around June 12th. Now, they've been monitoring this very, very closely. The information that is coming out is kind of sparse. Now, they recorded in the month of June, 1,171 earthquakes. And that is, that's kind of in the entire region of Yellowstone. Now, looking at this map right here, this shows you the actual caldera. And I've been doing a little research on Yellowstone and what scientists have basically found over the course of the last several years. And, you know, Yellowstone is just not made up of this one big gigantic caldera, as you see here from the University of Utah. There are actually three calderas forming this massive, massive indentation. And that's exactly what this is. And if you go back into history and you learn about Yellowstone and this massive caldera, it is pretty intriguing. If ever there would be a massive eruption in this area, yes, it would be absolutely devastating to everyone on this entire planet, just not the people that live in the region. Now, I was watching a documentary not too long ago uh, that was pertaining to Yellowstone. And they were talking about archeologists that found animals such as rhinoceroses, antelopes, woolly mammoths, and these animals were in the region of the state of Nebraska, a very far distance away. And these animals died because they were inhaling basically volcanic ash, which is powderized glass. And they were amazed to find these animals encased in this volcanic ash and so far away from the actual caldera. And, you know, the more and more you dig into the information pertaining to Yellowstone, you know, you, you really start finding some information that is kind of scary. And I located this information right here. And this is from National Geographic. And it's, uh, it's a pretty cool website here. And it says, Think of Yellowstone as a gigantic pressure cooker fueled by a massive super volcano, water from rain and snow melt, much of it centuries old, percolates through the cracks in the Earth's crust until heated by molten rock reservoirs deep below. The water then filters upward, eventually finding release in the thousands of geysers, hot springs, and other hydrothermic or excuse me, hydrothermal wonders located there at Yellowstone. Now, this view here, this is gonna give you a topography look of Yellowstone. 
and then if you pay attention right under here you can see the magma reservoir and then below that the magma plume that stretches all the way over into the state of Idaho and this is what is very concerning because scientists you know they've just recently found this other reservoir underneath Yellowstone this is giving you another view of what is actually under there and it states that the plume of hot rock has been calculated at more than 600 miles deep but scientists suspect it actually descends as far as 1800 miles all the way to what's known as the earth's outer core mantle boundary now i just recently heard that there is enough magma in this reservoir to fill the grand canyon from top to bottom 11 times so you could only imagine the destruction if something would occur at yellowstone now taking another look at this next view if you look here at all the the bedrock basically all of these fractures and this is probably caused by many many years of the earth's crust moving it states up here the reservoir or excuse me the reservoirs and plume are superheated sponge-like rock holding pockets of molten material called magma the reservoirs heat which originates in the plume is what keeps the area's geysers boiling and this is what is known up here as the upper geyser basin and you don't realize really the magnitude and the size of this area until you really start looking into it we're going to move down to the next picture here now this is going to show you how all of the the snow melt and the water it gets into all of these cracks and all of these fissures throughout this bedrock and throughout this entire region and they consider this to be ancient waters so it basically states up here ancient rain and snow melt seep down to just above the volcano's magma reservoirs until they are superheated and rise again through the fractures volcanic heat and gases help propel the steam and water towards the surface where they escaped through the hot springs and the geysers and that's pretty much what yellowstone is known for and yes it is the largest super volcano on the face of this planet now this is a pretty good cross section of the boiling water and how it's going to make its way up through and to the surface it states that hot water rises from a deep reservoir into a teapot shaped chamber such as what you see right here as water and gases fill the sealed space pressure builds preventing boiling water some water spills into the spout releasing pressure and allowing the water in the chamber to boil steam and water then blast up the spout meaning right here and i believe they do have this animated so you can actually see this and there you go and this is what produces the geysers it says here pressure builds behind a narrow constriction until steam shoots through some water splashes out then jets of steam and water explode rising on an average of 130 feet as the chamber drains pressure drops and the process begins again now it states here that the highest recorded eruption was 184 feet it's pretty high uh, 17 eruptions per day on an average 1.5 to 5 minutes in length of these eruptions so that's what forms the geysers there at Yellowstone now looking at this topography map here and this illustration it states that the park's hydrothermal features clusters in basins at the margins of lava flows or near faults rivers and streams are heated as they pass through these basins heat and escaping gases are also evidence of the subterranean forces that lie below Yellowstone now this was this was a pretty good illustration of what actually occurs 
underground there at Yellowstone. And there's also a pretty good YouTube channel I like to I like to watch. It's called Incredible World. If any of you folks want to subscribe to this channel, there's a lot of really good information here pertaining to our planet. And they did a video about the seven super volcanoes on the face of this planet. And they numbered them one through seven. And naturally, number one being Yellowstone. So I'm going to go ahead and play the rest of this clip. They are down to number one, which is Yellowstone. So let's let's take a listen. As you can see in this dramatic representation, the Yellowstone caldera is completely breathtaking in scale. Beneath this peaceful, picturesque landscape lives one of the largest active pools of magma ever known. Yellowstone's epically proportioned, recently discovered secondary reservoir which sits below the already enormous subsurface upper chamber, is estimated to hold enough magma to fill the Grand Canyon more than 11 times over. Perhaps needless to say, a Yellowstone super eruption would constitute a worldwide extinction level event, with all life on the planet placed at risk. Such is the volume of rock, gas and dust that would be hurled into our atmosphere, blocking the sun, drastically altering global temperatures and cloaking the continents with debilitating ash. You know, this is a really good video, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, if you're interested in volcanic activity and the seven super volcanoes on this planet I'll leave a link to this in the description box and it is pretty intriguing it's very alarming and then whenever you go back to the actual article and you start seeing this seismic activity at Yellowstone more than 1100 earthquakes in just a few weeks it makes you wonder what is occurring under Yellowstone there was a lot of publicity pertaining to this activity, but when you start reading what the seismologists say, they basically downplay it and they say it's normal activity. Normal activity. But what I've looked at over the course of the last couple of years, finding data on Yellowstone, this is not normal activity. Because if it was normal activity, it would not be making news around the world. You would not have thousands of news agencies, not just YouTubers, news agencies around the world reporting on this. Now there was also some talk about the, the big NASA SOFIA airplane that houses the big telescope. They were flying over and over and over this area. And you wonder why? Well, they measure the uplift, the uplift of the ground on top of this super volcano. It basically swells and contracts. Now, there was some other information that I was reading yesterday pertaining to the last super blast at Yellowstone. And there were mountain ranges that were 12 to 15,000 feet high in this area. And 3,000 feet of those mountains, well, they basically sank directly into the ground. So I guess seismologists and geologists, well, they've been over this area time and time again. But the fact of the matter is 1171 earthquakes in a matter of two weeks, not even a whole month, 
it's definitely alarming. And it makes you wonder once again, what is heating up the core of the earth? What is heating up our atmospheres? What is heating up our oceans? What is melting the North Pole? What is causing all of the extreme temperatures around the world? Climate change, you say? Okay, I have to agree. The climate is changing. However, what is causing that climate change? What is causing the heating up of the atmosphere? What is causing the heating up of our oceans? Why all of a sudden over the period of the last two years has volcanic activity increased tenfold? Why has earthquake activity increased tenfold? A lot of questions, very, very little answers. But I wanted to bring you this information on Yellowstone. I thought it was quite intriguing. I wanted to share it with you. And I will definitely leave you a link to the information for the article issued by the Watchers and also the information from National Geographic and also the video. So you can take your time, do a little investigation, increase your knowledge. But I definitely thought that this was very interesting. 1171 earthquakes at Yellowstone in the course of a few weeks. This is Scott from Planet X News. Thank you for watching.